Hi everyone, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Fling Forward. Uh, super excited to be with uh, Bar from PlayStation. Bar, welcome to the Robert Show. It's your debut. I'm excited to chat. And uh, obviously, we've heard uh, you talk today at the keynote uh, and some interesting insights that you've shared. I'm kind of, you know, uh, obviously curious to learn more about yourself, what you do at PlayStation, but also wanting to learn how your team uses Fling across PlayStation's telemetry and uh, player experiences so our audience can learn more. Sure, sounds good. Yeah, uh, so let's start with your introduction sure. and uh, how you all have been using Fling. Uh, sure, so my name is Bahar Patarkine. I'm staff software engineer at PlayStation, uh, located in San Diego, nice. uh, California. Mm -hmm. uh, fantastic. Uh, tell us more about uh, how your team uses Fling across PlayStation's uh, telemetry and player experiences, uh, and then we can get more into the practical use case, a little bit more in detail about Flink. What problem did you solve uh, that led you to Flink? Uh, sure. Yep. So my team is uh, responsible for service, uh, which maintains uh, like play hours for the players. Yep. Right, but it's uh, it's total aggregation. Mm -hmm. So it tells you like, when was when did you first played and when did you last played? Nice. And total hours, let's say like you played like two hundred hours. Mm -hmm. So for each player, for each game, we have that data. So PlayStation uh, started working on this family app where they wanted more granular data for parents uh, nice. to get insight for their children. Yeah. Like yeah. what my kid is up to last seven days, what game uh, they played last seven days, how many hours each game. So we didn't have that data. And of course, uh, probably I'm assuming you're familiar, we have PS4, For PS5, sure. yes. and they wanted to show that data because kids can have either of the console. Yeah. And uh, the service I, my team responsible is only for PS5, mm -hmm. uh, right? And we didn't have that granular data. And that led us thinking like, uh, we cannot scale the existing app to get this data yeah. to power the playtime activity shown in the family app. Okay, uh, this is pretty interesting. Uh, on this stage, you also mentioned about uh, you process like more than 15,000 uh, events per second. How do peak uh, peaks during launches look? Uh, what latency SLOs do you hold by region? And how do you avoid uh, hot partitions across uh, titles? I'm kind of curious to know a little bit about that because 15,000 plus events per second is massive. Yeah, so I think I should clarify. So it's like averages around 12,000, 15,000 was the peak number. Peak and, number, yeah, okay. And, and these are specifically uh, telemetry gameplay events. Okay. From which we can calculate the stats of mm -hmm. players of each game for each user. Yeah. And yes, there are challenges <laughs> why we were exploring Fling to solve this family app. Uh, to see if we can overcome the issues we have seen in the past. I love it. Uh, in definitely, the family app seems to be so interesting and so helpful for the parents yeah. to you know track uh, all of what's happening and how the kid is uh, or the child has been using uh, PlayStation and how much time they are spending. Yeah. So that's very important. So uh, it's just more around the lines where how are you phasing the transition from Kafka consumers? to a unified uh, Flink pipeline. And uh, yeah, let's start there and then get more into the safeguards. Yeah, so, so for the existing features, which are using Kafka consumer, yep. we didn't touch that. We didn't transition them to uh, use the Flink-based jobs. Okay. But uh, for new data, for this new granular data, yes. uh, we started using Flink. Okay. And now we know the power of Flink. Exactly. Now I have thoughts like, yeah. how do I get rid of the existing Kafka consumers? Yeah. And this Fling job, which is listening to the same events, uh, I just have to aggregate with old data. So I think that still in thoughts. Hmm. So I don't know how we would go about that, but uh, I think th that would be an interesting challenge. Like, yeah. how, how do you switch? How do you cut off a Kafka consumer? Uh, which is aggregating data for the lives yeah. to use a Flink-based uh, consumer. Yeah, I think time will, uh, you know, let us know about that as mm -hmm. well. Uh, but uh, thanks for sharing that. Uh, pretty good insights. Uh, we also heard in this keynote, uh, and would love to hear your thoughts about this. Uh, how do checkpointing and async uh, I/O help you keep latency low during spikes or failures? So, if you can share a little bit about that. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, as you can understand, uh, these telemetry events, uh, are gov they have some data governance. Yep. So it does not have all the data we need mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. to calculate uh, like seven day play time for the children it doesn't tell me if it's a chi- if the event is for a child or not and a lot of things are like tokenized in it so we need to make uh, api calls yep to basically we call enrichment in flink yep yep uh, right so how do we enrich this event so we call uh, internal apis and i think that's where async state uh, came handy make uh, async call so yeah. i divided this pipeline into stages uh, first stage is to like consume from ps4 then ps5 make a union nice drop any uh, invalid events and the next step is call internal apis uh, to enrich uh, enrich the the stream i love so we it can process it yeah uh, and that's where flink came handy that's uh, awesome and a uh, good way to you know obviously uh, switch gears and move uh, ahead faster uh, i'm also wanting to learn a little bit about the privacy as well uh, so how do you handle privacy controls uh, and regional rules in real time that is like a task i feel like uh, if someone who's playing in uh, states or playing uh, your in europe will have different rules regulations yeah. in uh definitely privacy plays a very important role there yeah so that's why uh, the telemetry data has a lot of will tokenize so okay. uh, like specifically for this family app uh the piece my team supported was the playtime activity mm-hmm. uh, we didn't have to deal with the privacy but of course the api which surfaces is data uh it makes uh, uh it makes sure whoever is requesting data is for the parents the authorized parents nice. so data is not released and then that service handles uh, the parent child relationship nice. and of course as you mentioned each country has different regulation and what is the defined of definition of child account changes based on the region but i think that's outside of scope of my team okay okay got it uh, thanks for letting us know about that uh, now let's talk a little bit about cost and ops uh, that plays a very important yeah. role uh, how did flink simplify uh, in your pipelines and what impact did it have on cost operations would love to know a little bit more so it definitely simplified so if i take a step back mm-hmm. right when this requirement came my first thought we have a kafka consumer it's just going to it can aggregate the data we need uh right but that would have been only for ps5 so i would have to spin up a similar consumer uh to do it for ps4 but there is an existing consumer for ps4 but that is now in like rest mode or legacy and i don't want to modify a service written 10 year old yes, so yes. it would have been uh two different new consumers right uh so two different operational costs and essentially they are doing the same thing and surfacing the same data so talking about two consumers writing into one database so you can imagine it's adding mm-hmm. complexity yeah yeah like how do we maintain if something goes wrong oh is it ps4 or is it ps5 uh, so that would have been a, a huge operational overhead yeah exactly it's a huge cost yeah and i think implementation wise it i don't see it could have been a big deal but uh, i think i can imagine like twice compute cost and like operational nightmare yeah uh it's the best way to solve i think flink uh, is helping you all to get yeah. to the next level for sure uh one last question for you bar is um if folks want to reach out to you learn more about different things that you've been doing in the space uh, connect with you sure. and also learn more about uh, playstation and flink relationship where can they do that are there any blogs or anything so let's start with where can they connect you linkedin maybe yeah, yeah. Next. you can look me up on linkedin but i got to tell you like i started learning <laughs> flink 6 months ago so i'm no expert okay and like after attending the conference i see a lot of room like the flink job uh, my team spin up i'm i see lot 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 of room to optimize it that's nice yeah uh, and then yeah linkedin is fine like anything uh playstation i think there are playstation blogs okay great but anything uh like flink specific like i i'm happy to share and connect with on awesome. linkedin this is great uh bar such a pleasure chatting with you on the ravid show we'll keep the conversation going you shared some amazing insights and as i always say it's always good to chat with uh, practitioners enterprise leaders like yourself because you all have been using aid 
uh, first hand you all know uh, the complexities the challenges but you all know the real power of it yeah. as well and looks like playstation and flink has a fantastic relationship yeah. uh, and a great way for uh, you all to get the results that you all wish to achieve yep so good. that's awesome uh, bar uh, once again Thank you very yeah, much for you. visiting the Robert Show. Uh, we'll keep the conversation going. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today.